can sorry, I'm just I'm gonna press record anyway, it's fine. And then you can join us. But uh it's fine. But the thing is we can carry on and if it doesn't work, then we'll just be like, all right, we've we've lost Lee, he's gone walkies. Is that is that what he's calling himself Lee? <laughs> I think so, yeah. I mean, I mean that's, that's what his parents that's named his name, him. Yeah, that's his name, yeah. So I think he's going to stick with Lee on this one. <laughs> that reminds me of the movie Blood and Bone. Because Bone is his name because that's what his parents named him. After he says, you know that thing that you say every time he hits, he breaks? Don't say that no more. And then he comes out with that quality. Right, let me do a group what's chat. His name? John Bond. What's his <laughs> no, no, it's a Michael J. White movie from. Yeah, Blood of course. Yeah, no, no, I know. Yeah, but what's Bigos. his name in the thing? Is it John? Oh, Bond? In the thing. Oh, no, I don't know the characters. I just know him as Bone. Where there? I'm about to join. Hello, mate. What's happening? Why are you joined? Oh shit! What's up with the laptop, man? Is it dead? Wait, that's your laptop. I thought it was a curtain. That is the curtain. Like the laptop's underneath the curtain, or he's thrown down the window. I don't know what's going on. What's going on? I was literally thinking, like, that's not the screen, surely not. See, what's going on? It's hiding in the background. What's that? Is that time to What is that? What's beeping through your roof, bro? That's true, actually. Fuck it. So, what's happening with the laptop, Lee? Is it dying on you? I'm just like uh, logging back into uh, emails now. Out of curiosity, uh, when was it last it, updated? It's a Skype link and uh, it should, it, to be fair, it should work. I, I, I don't know why it wouldn't. And I don't like hearing myself. Can you turn me down, Rick? Oh, God, you can it's hear yourself. Button. I don't know how to mute you on Skype. Skype you mad bastard. Right, we're going to get this on at some point. I think we yeah, are. Yeah, well, hopefully now, but where is he? Where's he at? Where's he gone now? Has he, have we just cancelled his whole thing now? Oh, for fuck's sake. Well, wait, because it says three it says of three. Two of so three. I've got it. two of three on mine. I don't have yeah. three of three. I've got two of three as well, and I've called him. I'm calling him as well. Give him a call, lad. Oh, oh yes, there, there he is. Oh, there, there we go. He is fresh from Old Trafford. <laughs> <laughs> Straight from that win. Lee, can you hear us all right, bro? Yeah, fine, man. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Love it. Right, so we are recording. That's good. Rick. Huh? This is good. This is this is what it's all about, back. man. We're back. We are back with Amrabat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My yes. man is not coming on again. Never again. This is the end now. This is the end. Um, um, all invitations. <laughs> I appreciate the reading. Got Todd Martin's girl, isn't it? You got called Mate, too. You've got the tash and everything, which is brilliant. Yeah. Shave the beard. Now, nah, brother, it suits you. You look good. You look good. Yeah, no, the beard is good, man. Like, you know what I mean? If you were well, the last podcast, like we'd be talking it. about bald heads and beards. <laughs> so, you know, that's that's the way to go, that's really. It, yeah. Should we do it, Rick? Should we do like a quick intro and then get around yeah, to it? Yeah, get us in. Introduce, introduce uh, Lee oh, as well. Let's what? get in. Yeah, just do it. Just, just do, oh, it, bro. Shit. do it. All right, just do yeah. it, man. All right, just, just do it. Just got do no it. knees. Let's All right, shit. Uh, <laughs> I'm nervous now. Fuck, Lee, don't look at me. Let's say this. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Let's look at your ceiling again. Let's look at your ceiling. Yeah, look. Let, let me look at the skyline, <laughs> bro. That's sick. That what's that? What's that? Is that Times Square? Tell me. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get straight into it. Yeah. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Tash, my guys, with your boys Larry and Ricky. And tonight we've got a special guest coming from the northwest. His support in his northwest. Obviously, not. Oh, right, bro, let, me finish, man. let me finish, Sorry, thing, man. Let me finish my thing. Sorry, bro. Let me finish my thing, man. I'm trying to finish my thing. Come on. Ah, all right. He's the guy who spots Liverpool. Ah, all right. That's just... He's here. No, that's Lee, special. Lee, Lee special how you doing? Welcome to the episode. Welcome to the podcast. Glad to have you here. What's going on, man? I'm good. How are you, too? Very well. I was better. I was trying to like nail it with the intro, mm-hmm. but then my guy just wants to, you know what I mean? Just, hog the limelight. Ah, yeah, hog it. He, he finds it. the limelight and then he hogs it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no. Because I'm in the dark over here, that's all. Kind of Rick, we can see you, though. We can see you. You know what I mean? You're, you're acting like a mysterious guy. Anyways, um, obviously fresh from a, uh, another weekend of sport, of football. Um, and, you know, I think, Rick, because obviously we've got a guest, I think we should probably start off with uh, maybe the Liverpool match because it is I still fresh in our minds. It's only fair, right? It's only fair. It's only fair. So That's the kind of hospitality we provide. Yo, we don't charge for that either on the no, first podcast. All by the for way. free. Just not on the first podcast. And then afterwards, unfortunately, it is what it is. We'll have to have a chat. But <laughs> Lee, obviously, not really the result that you guys were looking for today. But considering how the match sort of turned out, 
first of all, are you happy with that result from Liverpool today? Away from no, home. No. Going, obviously, going to Brighton is a tough place to go now. So we'd have probably, yeah, we'd have probably took a draw, especially after the first thirty minutes because we started absolutely terribly. But once you once you go two one up at, at half time, yeah, you you want to hold on and take the win there, like. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, obviously, we discussed this on on previous episodes about about Liverpool, and you know, they, they just they just love conceding nowadays. You know, they went from maybe a few years ago, they went from a team who obviously you know they were very solid in defence. They had probably, arguably, the best defender in the league. Um, weren't weren't shipping that many goals, but like you know, in the last two seasons, and especially the beginning of this season, it's just sort of turned around in a way, hasn't it? Like what 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 is that? Is that just what Van Dyke getting old? They're not they're not joining up at the back. What what do you think? I mean as a Liverpool fan, you obviously pay a lot more attention than we do. So Yeah the, you are right in what you're saying the defence is an absolute shambles at the minute. Um well it has been all season. It's a conceding sloppy goals. Both goals today were errors of our own doing. Yeah. Um and yeah, I don't know, he's obviously Van Dyke like you say, is probably one of the best in the world at one point, but I don't know. It's just it's just fell off. Obviously, it's not it's not just him to blame. Like they've they've all all been the same. Really, none of them have been consistently good. Even the likes of Andy Robertson, yeah, we could always rely on him, but he was he was at fault for our second goal today. I think. So, I think I think with Robertson, I think with Robertson. I mean, Rick, do you want to jump in here because I know I know your feelings about Van Dyke, and uh, do you want to do you want to enlighten us with some uh, VD talk, please? I mean, a bit, a bit, Van Dijk, a bit of way. knowledge on VD. Yeah, Van Dyke, not venereal disease. No, just yeah. Well, no. All right, good. Just another of those. Uh, now, to be fair, I agree with what he's saying. He, I, it's not just as him. It's well, obviously it's clear to see. It is Robbo. It is Gomez. It is Trent. Predominantly the whole back line. But for me, is. I go back to that 450 that came in for Salah. You would have took that when he's a 31-year-old player to try and get that reinforcement. Now, City is successful for one or two reasons. One, Pep Guardiola, arguably one of the greatest, the greatest. You can make your own arguments for that. But second, they seem to invest heavy each year. Who's the boy that played left back tonight? 100 million? Playing out of position, playing out left back, the young Croatian. Jack Guardiola, Guardiola isn't it? Jack yeah, Guardiola, he came Guardiola. in just there, right? Ake, Akanji, you know, John Stones is there. He let go of Laporte. He worked, it didn't work. He let go, brought somebody else in. But okay, again, different owners. Maybe Klopp is working with crumbs in terms of when it comes to. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for transfer window fees and maybe budget sorry there's a better word transfer budget but VVD is still a quality defender you can see that on him and I've always said it in the past he's more of a sweeper defender because on one on one sometimes he can come short but uh, nah like I chat shit about him but to be fair I'd love to have him on my team if he was in a ch- wearing blue he'd be quality but I think your whole back line has been awful Alisson is the only thing at the back that is kind of keeping the goals out I do agree yeah we to be fair, defensively today, our best defensive player. <laughs> you're probably laughing. You probably to to a great that. game against me. Sorry, are you able to say it again, Paul? It's just disconnected. For the listeners, we're trying something new. We're trying. We've changed our. We've changed. We've changed the platform for just for this one time only. We're going to come back to the. We just added platform. one guest. That's. We just, just added one guest, and it's already screwed guest, up. All no more guests. Uh, no more guests from now on. No. It's not you, Paul. It's not you. <laughs> no more guests from now on. All right, that's it. That's it. We're but, not. Yeah, repeat what, what you said. Repeat what you said. Same about the defense today. Funnily enough, Trent was probably our best defensive player. He kept Matoma quiet for, well, most of the game, really. And then he got subbed off on 80 minutes and Joe Gomez came on and had an absolute nightmare. <laughs> yeah, yes. I, I didn't watch the game, by the way. Like, full disclosure, I didn't watch the game. I was out with a family because uh, you know work all we got jobs and shit so the weekend is for the family but I try to make time for the Arsenal uh, City but yeah I caught the final 10 minutes and they said Joe Gomez came on and he just looked a liability Yeah, the moment he joined he was just a liability and it is funny when you say it is funny to say it is funny to hear Trent is the best defender well, I mean, look. We're, obviously, we've we've had those discussions before, and I think that the fact that the fact that Trent's role has kind of changed as well. You know, he's not really in that position anymore. But you're right. As soon as Gomez came on, Matoma just made him look foolish 
and to the point where obviously even a few minutes later he got a yellow card as well. So it very, very sort of rash defender, if you ask me about about Joe Gomez. And and the fact that obviously you had Matip on and then he um sorry, you had Kanate on and then he came off. It just I don't know, there's no real there's no real confidence being shown to the back line and it doesn't matter who it is. Literally that that's like three of your four back line that's that's been subbed off and that's yeah. very rare. And for Liverpool it it never used to happen because that was it. You had the players that you know they, they were the stable, uh, they, they were the yeah the stable defenders. I, th- I think another thing as well, a lot of questions again asked of Liverpool defence. Where in the past, especially the year you won the league and the Champions League, or went very close that year with City, but I think you won the Champions League instead of the league, where City beat you by a point. Was uh, your defence started with a front three? No, you're, you are no longer pressing the way that you did with the Mane, Firmino, and Salah, and that's when it gave you half the time you won the ball by the midfielders. Once the ball got into Hendo, Fabinho, whoever else was in your midfield, Milner. Etc. That's it. That you were done. Van Dijk looked pretty. So did your Matip or your Kanate. Although Kanate might not have been there that year. But yeah, you had a lot of players who just looked really good because you were winning the ball so high up front. That seems to have changed. More teams are kind of beating your press. So yeah. But uh, so what do you think needs to change now then to kind of get back to those heights? In your opinion, as a Liverpool fan, what do you think? What would you change or what would you like to see different? But with the with the front three that we had today. Salah, Nunes, and Diaz, they'll press, they'll press all game at a high pace, all three of them. But then behind them, it's still, it's still not great. You've got Saboz lying in there playing the like the attacking midfield role, which is great. He's very good signing, and he will do the pressing. But then after that, you've got you've got McAllister playing completely out of position. He looks out of his depth in that defensive midfield role. And then today we started with Harvey Elliott and he had a couple of nice little bits, but he's he doesn't really seem to have the legs to do the pressing that we've that we've known over the last maybe like three or four seasons. I think with uh, with with Harvey Elliott, I watched him uh, midweek and I genuinely thought he was really good. Um he was a he, I thought he was probably your best midfielder uh, on that day. But you're right, Soboslai, you can only do so much. You've got the three uh, three pressing at the front, but then, like you said, behind, because McAllister, especially today, you know, he it seemed like the occasion got to him. And I think, Rick, you mentioned this on the last pod, that, yeah. you know, McAllister, this could affect him. And it did. It did. It wasn't, it wasn't himself and, you know, some rash sort of decisions that he was making. But, yeah, I think I think that your midfield, um, for, again, for a moment in the last couple of weeks, you know, you, they sort of clicked with the Soboslai's and McAllister's. But then it, it doesn't seem very consistent and that has obviously been a major problem because, again, beforehand, when you won the league, you won the Champions League, your midfield, you've, you'd had that midfield for a long time. They'd worked together for a long time. So it's a bit obviously unfair for, for anyone watching or for Liverpool fans to be like, oh, I can't believe they haven't, haven't hit the ground running. Because let's face it, they're, they're still newish players. Darwin Nunes, what, the second season with Liverpool? Yeah, Luis yeah. Diaz, what, second season? So again, it, when you actually look at it if, like at the bigger picture, they, they haven't played together that long to to create that sort of partnership. Salah and Mane, you know, they were together for, for quite a bit when, uh, when they built it. They never hit the ground running on the first season together, but gradually they realized, oh, wait, yeah. we've got we've got pace. We can we can take on uh, players. And again, that's what they did. Like Rick said, they, they attacked, they defended from the front. Another um, thing though, isn't it? The midfield, like you said, those players have had a season or two or this is second season, but the midfield is a brand new midfield. That trio yeah. in midfield has only been put together this summer. So obviously yeah. like McAllister, Endo or the, young, the other lad that played today, the Dutch lad that you got from the German yeah. league. What's his name, sorry? Brian Gravenberg. Yeah, Gravenberg, he yeah. So like, yeah. He's a good player. Well, one thing I wanted to ask you: Are you guys playing with the three of the, the three midfielder? Are they more of a, like a flying V, so like a Sobosly as a ten roll, or is it more of a sitting V with a McAllister as a CDM, and then the other two boys either side, like a Sobosly and an Endo, or uh, not an Endo? Sorry, what's his name? A Harvey Elliott, because Endo's left. So yeah, McAllister is sort of the defensive midfielder, and then we had like uh, Sobosly and Harvey Elliott in front of him, but sort of side by side. Yeah, so like a V-shaped sort of thing side by yeah. side here on the other side. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, that's going to take time. I've seen it with my team, obviously, when the, one player presses, you need to press as a unit. I saw it today with the moments with Arsenal where it was easy to beat the press, same for City, all the teams. If you're going to press, you need to press the way Liverpool did in that season of, what was it, 17, 18, 18, 19, especially the season where you won the league as well when it was COVID. And the season before COVID, I think that was your best season. You got piped to the league, but that's the time when the three 
three top boys would press and then a hendo and the next player in midfield would press your wing uh, sorry your left back and right back would push right up onto the left winger and right winger so effectively you went man for man you're pressing but you went man for man and you just suffocated teams out to the point you got the ball and the only way for teams to breathe was to concede a goal or corner or kick the ball out now that's going to change is it sustainable to do that year in year out probably not because you need certain types of players who are going to come in and gel into that team Klopp is the guy to do it for me if anybody's going to do it it'll be Klopp but the guys that you have bought and McAllister is not known for a runner in midfield he's not really an engine I know he did it in the World Cup but yeah I don't know how you boys feel but for me you're going to I think it's going to be tough to kind of get back to those heights of pressing because that was your arsenal pressing was your kind of that's what suffocated teams yeah I think uh, real, sorry Lee, real quick I was going to say with uh, with with that you know, I think if they accepted if they accepted that sort of money for Salah, I think that could have been what they would have rebuilt on rather than because because so, again, even though they've got good players in Graven Birch and Soboslai, you know they haven't you know they haven't proven themselves in any major leagues in terms of you know they haven't really done much for them to slot straight in. So I don't know. For me, I was that was going to be a question to ask by the way before before you go on. Like you know, what, how did you feel about that 150 million? You know, would that have been better spent on on someone who is a defensive midfielder rather than you know, shifting McAllister there, even though that's not really what he's known for. Yes, probably. But the problem we had with that was we didn't get that offer until right at the end of the transfer window. And then it had been, it was too late for us to get anybody in without paying ridiculous money because they knew we had the money for somebody that was worth probably half, half the amount that we would have ended up paying. A Caicedo, a Mudrick, an Enzo. Yeah. Should I keep I mean, going? You named you, you named, you named three going? players, and one of them is one of them is good. Do you know what I mean? So that's well, one of them is good, but still, the 120, 120 million is still a lot of money. But yeah, Caicedo for me was anyway. I agree, Lee. But I think one thing you guys needed to do was really not think short term of like, what are we going to do from now until Christmas? You should the offer comes in, and then you just because you had enough players: Gakpo, Nunes, Jota. Yeah. Yeah, what's his name? Diaz, Luis Diaz. You had enough players to kind of uh, satisfy the attacking needs. The problem that you had, like you say, is the defensive mid. You lost Fabinho, DM. I remember your comment. It was in a Facebook, on a social media comment. Somebody mentioned, I think it was a preseason, and I'll never forget this. Somebody, Fabinho, you just got the season you bought Fabinho, right? Bear with me as I try to recall the whole moment. So you just bought Fabinho. You're in preseason in America or Asia or somewhere, one of these eight places where you make like 10 million. And somebody posted a Man United fan on your status. Ah, oh, Fabinho, nobody got to see him, what he did. And you went, he's a defensive midfielder. You have to attack in order to, to see that. And I thought, do you know what? That is absolutely quality and since then you've not really had another player do that kind of role but yeah I always remember that comment because this United fan came on thinking being a clever little so and so and you went your team didn't attack to see the best of Fabinho mate so yeah that doesn't, it was, uh, it was that doesn't such a good like now, I can't remember who he was. I think I think we went to the school with a kid and so on as well. By the way, for the listeners, we've all been friends for, for yonks now, haven't we? Like decades upon decades. Many, but, many. Uh, but no, for me, going back to what I was point I was making is you shouldn't... Is, short-term thinking that you had another window coming up in about what four weeks four weeks sorry four months and out of, out of those four months two international breaks in there so yeah for me if even if he was at Chelsea and he was like so on I would have sold him like an Eden Hazard 150 came for a 31 year old Hazard and you know how much how you guys feel, know how I feel about Hazard I put him like on a pedigree with the JTs the Lampards the Didiers the Zolas and so on is uh, Chelsea players then so yeah, of course. But I, I mean, as a Chelsea player, like as a club legend, I put him at the very, very top. I've told you, even on the chat before, like move sidetracking on Hazard, prime Hazard was third best in the world to only Ronaldo and Messi on their prime. There was no one better than a prime Hazard, apart from those two boys. And well, Larry's, Larry's pulling faces here because he thinks Pepe come from Lille at 75 million was better. But no, I don't, don't remember close. saying Pepe. Don't remember saying Pepe. Not at all. Not at all. But no, I mean, no, what I'm saying you know. is your short term thinking with the club is you really should have sold him. Although you would have got inflated prices because you got 150 million. Everybody knows you've got this money. You could have just sat on that money until January and then did something. Yeah, that is right. If let's say if we'd if we'd have tried getting somebody instantly, then we'd have paid over the odds. But if we'd have sat and waited until January. And we could have, you could have watched obviously a few players over the four month period, and then sort of decided who you wanted from there. Um, what I think one of the main problems for Liverpool is when we were doing well with Fabinho, Henderson, Firmino, Mane, we were doing that well for that long, 
that we didn't really change anything. It was the same squad. We added the odd couple of players here and there. And then all of a sudden, Mane's moved on. Hendo's legs went. Fabinho's legs went. Van Dijk's obviously a few years older than he was. Um, and now we're in the predicament where, oh hell, like now we need to rebuild everywhere. Yeah, so. yeah. No, yeah, I, I think as say, well. Sorry, go on, sorry just quick no, question. No, no. Uh, maybe it's a. I don't, maybe both used to think here. I've never known Liverpool to spend money before they got the money. So obviously, you rebuild with the Van Dykes and the Manners and so on. When you got the Coutinho money coming in, you guys made an offer for Moises Caicedo of 150 million before the Salah offer was made public. Do you think that offer came through? You made the offer then for Caicedo. He didn't come, and then you were thinking, actually, do you know what? We can't let go. Do you know, kind of when you buy a house, you're in a chain. I must sell one to buy this one. Similar thing here. I'm going to offer 115 for Caicedo, 100 or whatever it was you offered for Moses Caicedo. He turned you down, so then you're like, actually, we can't let Salah go, so we might have to hold on. Do you think that might have happened? Because well, am I wrong in thinking the offer got made public after the re- the rejection from Moses uh, Caicedo? I'm not sure. As far as obviously me and other Liverpool fans, as far as I know, um, the Salah offer was literally last minute. Um, but yeah, that is is obviously maybe a possibility of why they've turned it down. But again, Liverpool fans like that offer for Kai when that went in, we were like, "What on earth is going on?" Liverpool yeah, it was out of the blue, wasn't it? Yeah. It was like, "What?" Yeah. I think even even with obviously even with with Chelsea ending up buying him I, I, at that price, I just think it's ridiculous because let's face it, with seven eight matches in now eight game weeks in, and I'd, I'll be honest, I haven't been impressed with Caicedo not even a little bit. Really, um, yourself. He, he just no, are you are you kidding me? Are you are you seriously having this conversation about Caicedo? Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I'll, take I'll, I'll agree. I'll, I'll, take I'll agree with that whole Hazard thing and whatever, right? But there's no way you're going to convince me that Caicedo has been a good signing for you. Like, right, say that all. one more time because I just need to snip the whole. I agree with the Hazard. You snipping now. Listen, with the with the Caicedo stuff. To be fair, he's yeah, he has, but again. Do you know what I mean? The whole team has for Chelsea. The last two games that he's played, and I'll touch on it this while well, he did so well for me this week as well. But yeah, last two games I've been impressed with him. Again, not to the level that I'm expecting 115, 120 million pound player and what I saw at Brighton. But don't forget at Brighton, he was around teammates that he's been with four or five years. You know, like that's that's one of the main differences. But there's signs there that it's happening slowly for Chelsea. But I'll get onto that. So, uh, so what do you do now then, Lee, for your Liverpool to wrap up on Liverpool? If an offer comes on for uh, Salah, 150, maybe less now because they'll probably offer 120. But even if it's over 100 million, would you take it in January, knowing you're probably fighting for title and top four? Would you give up? Or would you give up a season of tr- uh, silverware for a uh, for a long term project, i.e bring money in to get those midfielders that you mentioned or a centre back not sure at the start when the uh, when the offer came in in August I thought we'd have took it and I, like I said myself probably said in the group that for 150 million for a plus 30 year old it's it's daft to turn it down but you see he's, he's still doing it week in week out he got two today obviously one of them was a penalty but um, it all counts take him out of the team in the middle of the season in January then I don't know obviously it depends where we are in the league if we're if we're still up there fighting likes of Arsenal and City Tottenham um, <laughs> such a prick I know where you're going <laughs> Uh, You'd have to insult him right there to his face, Lee. You know, I do that already, man. You'd have to insult him to his face. Uh, I thought I'll take. I thought I'll take the punchline because I knew the way he was going. He, he wasn't even going to say it, but you you mentioned it, so it had to no, be. I, said, I mentioned it because he was going to. He, what he said was, if we're up there with the likes of Arsenal, City, Tottenham, where's the lie? Where's the lie? No, like, it's not a lie. lie but, like why I mentioned it. Brentford, West Ham, yeah, exactly. Brighton, <laughs> Newcastle are in there, by the way. They're in the mix. But uh, but yeah, I think Lee. I mean, overall, overall, with with the performance today, because like I said, I watched I watched the majority of that match. I was switching between that and Newcastle, and there was there was moments where again you just looked dangerous. But overall, overall, I don't see this, the same threat in Liverpool. Like, oh, don't get me wrong. Like a Nunes, for example, I chat enough shit about him that that guy will end up scoring and he and that's what he does but recently I've been like ah oh, you know what he's uh, he's changed it's turned the corner and he hasn't scored so I need to talk shit about him but I think as an overall performance I mean I personally I, I don't see Liverpool as a major threat 
I, I definitely think they're a lot better than Tottenham uh, in terms of the way they play. But what what do you think? Like in terms of the performance so far, um, like especially this match. Forget so far, for this match only. Then what what do you think about this match only? So today, back to what you were saying earlier, about other teams pressing. Brighton pressed us from the off today, and we couldn't deal with it at all. We didn't know what to do. So for the first half an hour, we were just sort of chasing shadows, really, passing out Allison to the defence, to Van Dijk, and then obviously for, for their first goal, Van Dijk passed pass it into McAllister with three men around him. Um, and obviously they pinched the ball and scored from there. But we, because we had like Salah, Nunes and Diaz as our front three today, they had, uh, Brighton had Solly March playing left back out of position. And we've got probably, probably still I'd say, one of the best right wingers in the world on him. So instead of trying to play out from the back every time I was I was like thinking why don't we stick it in stick it over the top Allison's got the yeah uh, launch it launch it so they yeah, can run it behind yeah run it multiple times um, stick it over the top give them something else to think about and then and then press from there like you were saying press from the front but I'm not sure we just seem to lack a bit of confidence even even with the ball like even when our defence has got the ball and we're trying to play out from the back it's it's all very panicky and, and rushed. Um, once we did start pressing a bit more from the front, Soberslide, to be fair, was the main one for it pressing. That's when we started playing good football and the first goal was a great goal. Real good football in the build-up for that. Um, and the second half, we started real well. Again, still pressing. Um, and then just sort of dropped off a bit towards the end. Brighton, for probably the last 20 minutes, Brighton, probably the better team, to be fair. And, the goal was coming, I think. I think it was defensive error from from Robertson for the uh, for the free kick. Um, but to all, probably probably a fair result. I think I was going to say. I think I genuinely think it was it was a fair result because even just looking at the stats, just forget the eye test. Even looking at the stats, the stats were very very close. Um, some corners, uh, they had more corner kicks, but again, that's just that that was mostly due to the to the sort of coming up to the end of the game where they just threw people in. Like especially in the second half, they realised like, oh wait, we can hurt this, these guys, and that's that's obviously what they were trying to do. Um, but after after you after Salah scored the two goals, I generally I thought at that point I was like, all right, this is it. They're going to roll them over here, but then. And, you know they came back. Brighton came back. They, they, they had fight in them. We just stopped playing again. Like if obviously, like you were saying, the the pressing and the fitness. And if you carry it on, then you go stick another two goals past them, maybe. But I don't know. Do they get comfortable? Maybe you think ah, we've done it before. We're one down. Now we're two one up. So we're gonna go win it. But. It seems to be it seems to be like a like a thing for Liverpool. Again, every every episode I'm saying this when we do the predictions is like, you know, they will concede, they'll win or they'll yeah. you know, they won't lose, but they will definitely concede. And that seems to be the theme. And again, a better say a better team because Brighton are a good team. But like, you know, if you're facing City and you're doing this type of stuff, then unfortunately it's just it can get very embarrassing. It, yeah. Potentially. I'm not saying it will, because you know, Liverpool are not a shit team. But you know, some of the chances that you like you said you know, if you're dropping off in the in the second half of games and you're just not paying attention to the to the match all the way till the end, then yeah, someone like City will punish you. Many, oh, like with many many nearly goals. punished you as well. Exactly, though, exactly. Uh, what was it? Who was the guy? Pedro or something? I forgot the striker. Joe Pedro. Joe Pedro. Joe Pedro. Yeah, player, he missed. He missed pretty much that. He did. Past that he did. That was a that was a composure. Sit, that was a lay that down. Been, that's what that yeah. was. <laughs> that was awful. That was lay. Yeah, that was not even a sit. That was that a lay down. Laid down. That's what it was. But yeah, I, I, I'll be honest. There is that. He was, he was literally stood in the box on his own. Stood on yeah. the penalty spot on his own. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was shocking. That for 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 a striker at the, at the highest level, at, like in the Premier League, to do that, it's it's beyond me, really. Is and obviously for your team, you're worried. Like, why is he there on his own? Why oh, is he on, well, why yeah. is he unmarked? It's the same. The goal that Arsenal conceded effectively when he played against Lons. Declan Rice was in any way near the Jao Pedro position that he was in today, and the the other guy put it away a bit more clinical, a bit more composure, and it could have been a different result today. You could have gone home with nothing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, obviously, for for me, because the where Liverpool are right now, a draw was definitely the best thing. Obviously, if they weren't going to lose, a draw was the best thing that I could ask for. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I just I I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that I'm I'm afraid for Liverpool like I was last season because last season they were just poor. Like the beginning of last season was shocking from Liverpool. 
But this season, they started off decently. They're, they're well within the mix. Uh, it's not like they're falling behind. When you compare, like I said, when you compare performances of Liverpool compared to Tottenham, Liverpool are a better team. They're just a better team. But with Tottenham, I don't know what it is. The luck is really on their side. With every match that I've seen Tottenham play, it's just luck is on their side. And I don't think that's a sustainable thing. But we'll, we'll talk about that. That's the thing, though, isn't it? Like, it's, uh, with Tottenham, I think... He's, it's what he's done they just seem to go continuous they seem to be relentless just kept trying I watched a little bit of that game and Richarlison missed the sitter went with the wrong foot yeah. their player missed the sitter the guy who's been with them for 12 years from non-league to Premier League I forgot his name the big lad uh, the striker uh, not Morrison the other guy and he missed an absolute sitter as well but yeah it, this, well it, done to it, Tottenham was it uh, what was his name Doughty was it Doughty or something yes I forgot his name but yeah he was <laughs> He was awful, by the way. Doughty, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. To the, right. we'll, we'll do the, exactly, yeah. exactly. When we do the predictions, by the way, see how right or wrong we were. We'll uh, we'll touch on the on the other teams. But I mean, Lee, do you, obviously, in terms of Liverpool, do you, is there anything that you wanna that you wanna add that you sort of saw to there that maybe you thought, oh, that's brilliant, or uh, I'm not really sure how that's gonna work. Is there any even I don't know even a pass or something? <laughs> one, tell you what, one thing that does worry me as a fan watching Liverpool, and it's been the same all season. And probably, the, to be fair, the back end of last season, how we set up for set pieces, we looked so vulnerable for set pick from set pieces. Like today, I was saying about uh, probably, probably Robertson to take the blame for their second goal. So they've got a free kick on the left hand wing, and we have we set up across like the six yard box. Robertson is the front man, so when the ball comes in, Robertson is trusted to clear it with his right foot. He's the most left-footed person in the world. His right foot is just for standing on. Yeah, so, yeah, agreed. At the risk of putting it in his own net today, he just didn't swing. He just he just pulled out of it and it dropped straight, straight to Lewis Dunk's feet. But even even from corners and stuff, the amount of times the ball comes into the box and bounces in the box, and it's it's like schoolboy stuff. Like your ball doesn't shouldn't bounce in the box. You know, it should no. be it should be gone straight away. Yeah, it should be cleared. It just seems like it seems like with uh, with some like you said some of the tactics that maybe just not getting it right. Um, but is that enough? Is that enough for teams to you know to sort of go to you know face Liverpool and beat them? No, I don't think so. I don't think that's enough. But it's something that obviously Klopp has to has to address in the in the upcoming in the upcoming matches. Um, but you're running out of defenders. <laughs> I'll be honest, with you. you are running out of defenders because you need them everywhere, but they, you don't have that many to be everywhere. So, and again, just looking at today, you get, obviously what was it, Konate coming off, and then uh, what was it, Gomez uh, coming on later on as well for Trent. It's it's just it's too many. Instead of changing the midfielders and the attackers, you're changing defenders, and it's not something that that really happens, especially with championship uh, yeah, uh, league winning teams. The defense is the is the defense that's pretty much like yeah. set in stone from the beginning of the season. You might add another one there to save a scoreline, but you don't really keep swapping defenders around. Do you? you don't yeah. substitute yeah. defenders. You you add defenders to save your scoreline and park a bus. But yeah, that's what happens. So I thought he was maybe been taken. He'd get taken off to sort of ease him back in. But it was the 80th minute before he took him off. So yeah. Yeah. what's yeah. the point if if you're trying to ease him back in? Yeah, don't keep him for that long. Yeah, don't keep him for that long. Who is this for? Sorry. That was Trent there. Trent, yeah. No, don't keep it. I was gonna say, yeah, definitely don't keep it for that long. But, uh, but yeah, I think I think that I think Liverpool will do well. Um, just obviously because it's the first time on the podcast, um, and it's maybe a bit early. But what do you think, prediction-wise, for Liverpool at the end of the season? What sort of uh, not what would you be happy with, but just from what you've seen right now, where do you think they'll end up in the league? Trophyless and outside of the Champions League spot. Oh, sorry, you're asking yeah, you're Lee. Sorry, sorry, you're asking Lee. Sorry, about your sorry, team sorry you're asking Lee. Lee. Uh, we're we're I don't reckon we'll get top four. Is that yeah. as a fan or I, is that you believe in it? No, I do. I genuinely think we will get top four. I agree. I agree with that. I think I think you're strong enough to get the top four. And I think, and again, I don't want to say short of me saying mark my words. Tottenham are not going to be anywhere near that sort of top three. I'll be honest with you. They're not going to be anywhere near it. Tottenham will finish above Arsenal this year. Oh, I mean, <laughs> shit. Come on, don't don't be salty like that. Do you know what I mean? We need salty for. <laughs> you go. Honestly, you're you're on the verge of going another season without European football. So come on now. You know, nah, we want. We'll, we'll, but, I, don't, uh, I hope we do. If unless it's Champions League, if we're going to talk about Chelsea, unless it's Champions League, I don't want European football. No, we'll uh, we'll definitely we'll definitely uh, get on to, move on to Chelsea. But Lee, obviously, you know, uh, in terms of Liverpool, we'll we'll you know we'll we'll have we're always we'll, we're always having discussions about Liverpool because obviously you guys are in the group and. Uh, Sometimes you like chatting shit, so that's what we do. 
But in this case, I you know I want to chat shit to Rick. Chat shit so. to your face. <laughs> <laughs> chat shit to your face. Yeah, well, let's keep it about Sunday. Then. Let's, let's keep it. Let's keep it. Yeah, let's, let's, let's move it on, on to. Sunday. Let's move no, 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 actually, do you know what? I want to talk. I want to talk about your game because again, big win. Our game. Big win. Yeah, for yesterday. It's a big win for you boys. Let's keep it. I think. I think we should well, talk since we'll it's Sunday. It's that, we'll come to that. You, you scored that four goals. Goal. You scored four goals, yeah. which is yeah. weird because you know Chelsea don't score goals. So I, I just wanted like I want to, I want to hey, hear your excitement people. because give me the mic. I'm, I'm ready. Oh, uh, hey, I'm, I hope you're ready, bro. But you know because well, I, you want to, what do you, you want to Lee, know? Do you know what it is, right, Lee? Do you know what it is? This is this is how you know that Rick's had a good weekend because he will chat shit about every other team, but when they lose, he's always like, ah, yeah, they do all right, you know, they they're, they're okay. Then <laughs> what's that, Rick? Are you morphing? Is that a morphing coin? What is that? <laughs> that is that is a Power oh, Ranger, the White Ranger, the Blue Ranger. Sorry, not White Ranger, Blue Ranger. You have your morbid die. Nah, let's begin. Then. Let's begin. Let's keep it professional. Nah, let's not keep it professional at all. But, uh, uh, I just want to know, I just wanna know what, what, like, what happened to you boys. Like, you know, four goals. What's going on? What happened is crazy. trust, confidence. That's literally what happened. Just trusting each other to be able to pass the ball and trust each other in the way you trust your teammate that you're going to give them the ball and they're not going to lose it. Uh, we started off quite poor with a lack of trust, thinking as if we're the top dog. Raheem Sterling was quite shit to be honest in the first 20 minutes I even put it on chat for fuck's sake he started Raheem again Raheem, yeah. and then all Raheem, of a sudden he goes boy. and gets involved in four, all four goals and you think this is what you can do do you know the thing is it's that kind of thing of when you know what you can offer or you know let's say you've got your own son or daughter or somebody or a family member or something you're like you know what you can do this is your potential this is where you've literally been for the past four years at Man City you've been involved in goals running at defenders taking them on scoring creating and then you come to your Chelsea, you just slow right down, you slow the game down, you slow everything right down. But uh, one second, because I'm being interrupted by my darling daughter. Oh, no, that's that's cool. That's cool, Rick. Um, I think yep. I think you're right, though, because I watched, again, parts of this match and um, it just seemed a bit more, more cohesive as a team. You know, you, you were playing you were playing for the team, basically, rather than... That's uh, it. That's it. Rather than... Rather, rather than individual, individual, isn't it? But, but again, uh, you, add, you added the addition for me and I'll... I, again, I will stick by this. Cole Palmer is probably one of the best additions that you've had to your team in in the last three windows, because he's such a good player. He's so confident on the ball, and again, he's one of those guys who's like, "Fuck you, man! I got this." And that's what you need. You need that guy because everyone else was just becoming very sensitive. Lee, obviously, I don't know if you actually watched the uh, if you watched the Chelsea match or caught any of it. I didn't see it. No, um, but I do agree on the Cole Palmer. I, I, I didn't understand the substitu- uh, substitution, the transfer, to be fair, from a same. Man City point of view. Yeah, I, I, I'm the same as you. I was thinking, I was like, wow, I didn't even know he was up for sale. Why didn't anyone else go for him? But apparently Chelsea, you know, they just snuck in there. But great, great signing, I think. And uh, he's shown it in the last two games and the fact that he started this match as well and took a penalty, by the way, over all the yeah. other main players. There. It's 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 incredible. But uh, but yeah, Cole Palmer, I think he's made a hell of a difference. And obviously they got a little bit lucky, Chelsea, you know, with the with the own goal. But that's obviously we, we have to wait for Rick to to let us know that. But uh, there he is. And uh, I, think, uh, I think his criticism was these delivery uh, drivers, man. It feels like as if I'm the only house here. Yeah. Shit, bro! Like, it's you know, like as hey, if I'm the only house in the street. You seem the uh, you seem to raise your hand button on the bottom, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm back. My apologies for that, listeners. My apologies. No, um, apologies no, he was just saying, we were just talking about uh, Cole Palmer and how good how good uh, he's been he's been for you guys. Um, in he has, last, he last really has. Matches. No, he's been good. He's been uh, he's been he's been uh, decent. And I'm going to use the word calm. And I know we joke around, but he's not he's not rushing the ball. He's 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 composed on the ball. He sees a bigger picture. He sees that a player is on the opposite side of the pitch, and he's not afraid to kick the ball there. He's, he's not afraid to hold player, it. Uh, he's creative. He's he's uh, composed. I'll use that word again. He's got a good finish on him. He's he's. <laughs> Exciting as well because he likes to be like, okay, what's he going to do? But again, he looks good because there's support on that right hand side. I don't know if you saw Cucurella was an option. Conor Gallagher was doing that Odegaard role yesterday and kind of being as an option inside the midfield. If Gallagher wasn't available, the ball would go to Moses Caicedo and then we would switch play and go to the other side. But yeah, the main thing, like you said as well, is just we're more cohesive. We're playing for the badge. He's got the guys feeling well. I enjoyed as well when Cole Palmer scored. Everybody hugged him. It wasn't, I didn't feel like it was, we just took the lead. It was more like, ah, you little scallywag, well done, got your first goal for the club, many to come, that kind of feeling, rather than, oh, well done, we're just two, excuse me, we're 2-1 up. Similar win. 
It's, I was when, just saying, uh, the guys from the pit, oh, sorry, the guys from the bench got up as well. They were celebrating. And it just seems to be more smiles rather than hindering darkness. God, we've had to extend the changing room. We've got a gazillion players coming through. You know, just a bit, it was more, but there were still things to work on. Like, I chat shit about Raheem because he deserves the shit chat ineffectively. Because wow. there are moments he's so good, and then there's moments he's just so off. Like, he is night and day. There is no in between with him. It's either he's running at defenders and being creative like he did yesterday, or he's shy. Now, I think he looked good yesterday because the opposition was weak. So, obviously, before we start all hail, hop, hopping on the praise and stuff, he did the same against Luton. Against Luton, he scored he two or he three. He actually had a good performance against Luton. He had a great performance Luton. against Luton. And Luton, we saw what Luton... Luton, uh, the, the, off a uh, quick side topic, the three teams that have come up this year have been, for me personally, the worst three teams to come up from the championship Agreed. since I started watching Premier League. Or since, like, for as long as I can remember. And that's why Raheem looks good, right? I think, well, they need to go back down because they're awful. I Genuinely awful. But yeah, that's one thing I think Raheem, I know everybody's hoping on the praise of, oh, Raheem is doing amazing and so on. Yeah, he ran at defenders, he did something, but the opposition was weak, man. The, the, the right back, Vitinho, or whatever his name was, awful. The penalty, what's he doing driving in for that penalty? But hey, I'm not complaining. We're winning two in two or three if you count the Carabao Cup. But, uh, and long may continue, but again, we're not clinical enough. When Cole Palmer, positive. Armando Broya, positive. Mudrick yeah. came on, passed the ball to, I don't know if you, do you see that bit of Mudrick when the ball came on and he I ran to the far line? I didn't at that and point. After he went 4-1, I was like, no, nah, was the point? Yeah, Jackson could have scored again, but he was just so slow on the ball. Too slow on the ball. It just takes a touch and you think, like, it needs to be instinct. You just need to hit it. Jackson None of this goal, though. Jackson's goal around. was really good. That was really it was good a good goal. finish. That was quick the time feet. to take a touch. Yeah. But, quick you know. Feet, you know, tapped it round and then obviously put it in, which was which was great. Uh, good to see. I, I, I like I like your players. It's just too many of them. So, you know, that was the whole problem with... with <laughs> too that. many players to like. It's, so, it's like a, it's like well, a king. You know. It's just too sweet. It's just too exactly. sweet. Exactly. That rots your teeth, though. So you know, I can't like them all. But uh, I think another another decent performance from uh, from Gallagher, which I, you know how much I love talking shit about him. So I think I need to stop that now because he's actually becoming good. So you understand there any, there's no is, correlation between you chatting two any, players and then performing. Look at right? all the messages. <laughs> look at all the messages about Richarlison, Nunes, and look at every time I've gone, oh shit, he's gone and scored. Like, look, at, there is correlation there. That goes with outside. Is there any players, by the way, who are suffering? Who you want me to uh, to start building up? Is there <laughs> anyone in particular that you want me to to, to do that? Probably for? just go through the eleven, mate. Go through the eleven. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you, uh, Rick. Obviously, would you say? Great performance against Burnley, a Burnley side that obviously haven't really done much all all season. You know, are you proud? Are you happy with that? I'm proud of the win. I'm not the performance the result, again. Yeah. I'm proud of the because you can only be what's put in front of you. So obviously, it's not up to us how bad Burnley are. It's up to us, up to us is just to get the job done, and we did. Obviously, started off really shaky. We weren't creating enough, uh, but yeah, we got stuck in there. Got that lucky goal. Sometimes you need a break. You know, with a deflection of the defender and it changes the direction of the ball or the height of the ball. And we were 1-1 one, one at half time, came out second half and it just we were firing. They did not stand a chance in the second half. First half, I think we, we went in the game with the mentality of we are better than this lot. And they played very good football. The guy in the middle, Cullen, was fantastic. He was everywhere. He was all over Enzo and Gallagher. He didn't let them breathe. Uh, but again, Burnley's quite naive. I've said it before. Like you can't come into the Premier League with that championship mentality of where you can beat everybody in the championship and you play silky football. And in the Prem, then you try to do the same because you get found out. And they have. I don't think they've. Have they got a win? They haven't got a W, have they? A draw? I don't even know if they've got a draw. I think. I, I think they may have won. I think they've got one win. I think. Um, let me just check. Oh yeah, yeah they've got one win against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Against Luton on, uh, yeah, they on beat Monday, Luton. So. That's it. yeah, so they beat the, the team that they came up with, which is yeah. you know quite expected because they beat them last year home and away, I think, as well. Oh, so, yeah, sm yeah they smashed no, them overall, last year. this isn't a game for Chelsea to kind of go away and be like, Whoa, we're back, we're going to win the league, we're favorites for top four, etc. etc. But it is a it's another block in the right direction, it's another yeah. step towards that progress, towards that team coming together. The real test starts after the international break where we face Arsenal at the bridge, then. Yeah. Uh, then yes, then the big list of teams that come after. 
but I mean, obviously, it, it was always going to come anyway. So that's that's just something that's but unfortunate. Players are coming, player, back, players are coming back, by the way. Players are coming back from injury. Reese James was available for this game, but obviously didn't feature because he's suspended for comments that he made towards the referee against the Villa loss. Right. So he's back from injury and training. Uh, obviously, two weeks international break. Hopefully, a couple of more players can come in as well. But the big players that we want is Nguku to come back, chill well. That, that our best team is a is still not put together. Chilwell, Reese James, Ungoku, you know, these are the kind of players that we're missing. Yeah, obviously like you said, they'll they'll be back they'll be back for, you know, after the international break or in you know for the bigger matches, hopefully. So that that's uh, that'll be interesting to see and what sort of challenge Chelsea uh, put up against against the top four. Like sorry, the current top four. Let's just you know, just in case Ricky goes, Oh, you know, you're talking about the top four again. Yeah, um, the no, current no, 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 top no. four, okay? Let's just take it easy. But uh but yeah, I mean, Rick, is any any sort of major takeaways from from that from that uh, from that particular match? I mean, is it, can I just say, by the way, in the first half there was four yellow cards for Chelsea, one for Pochettino, so five altogether. I'm just saying. I mean, that's the that when I made on the comment, the ref was weak. Like he gave Enzo Fernandez a yellow card, saying, "Ref, why did he get a yellow card on his first tackle?" Like literally, what he did, he just came over and said, "Ref, that's his." First. And the player's going to do that. It was a yellow card on Cucurella. What Cucurella did was yeah, dirty. Yeah. It was a yellow card. It wasn't a red. It was a yellow. But yeah, as, no, a, no, as a that. teammate, yeah. I'm going to come over and plead his case regardless. Just like I raised my hand when I know you've kicked it off or I've kicked it out for a throw, and I'm like, yeah. "Oh, ref, it's ours." Yeah. But you don't yellow card somebody for coming over. And I felt like the referee was like, "What?" I got the mentality of why you questioning me for, and that's what Pochettino came out and did as well. Because then it wasn't a yellow card on uh, on Armando Broya, but I know you said I'm going to watch the highlights on the chat, but they don't make the highlights. But it was a yellow card on uh, Lee, Thiago. You didn't, you didn't watch that match, but like you know what? I'm going to find you a clip and I'm going to share it with you in the group, right? And then I need you to make a decision that we can put out because that was that was a card. Like, what on Thiago? It. Yeah. Nah, it's not. It's 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 it, it, okay. Agree to disagree on. on that, but for me, it's not a yellow card because the boy, the what's his name, Vitino, kicked the ball like sixty yards in front of him, and it then he tried to go left in front of him. What is <laughs> it? Well the other end of the pitch, he kicked Isn't it at the ground. He, if you watch it again, he kicks it from the center circle, the edges of the center circle, and the, by the time he gets fouled, the ball has made it over to the nah, team. Thiago had already Thiago had already positioned himself to to, to sort of uh, Thiago block ran him there anyway. Pace, so. Ran at full pace, but that's not a yellow though, like a block in the middle of the park is not a yellow like I don't know he, he, he gone, wasn't even on the counter everything he could have gone he could have gone and took on the whole 11 and scored that's, why he, got the yellow. Him, that's why he got the yellow because nah, again because it, every you, foul you, becomes a, yeah but then every foul becomes he could have done oh he could have done you impeded yeah, me and, and I could have done you know what I mean that's where they're going and if they are doing that be fair for both teams Amando Breuer got fouled in the middle of the park he could have gone and Nothing got given. And he was on the last defender, one more defender, like a Van Dyke sort of role a bit further back, but or like a bit more back to the side. And he didn't get a yellow card, the defender, for that. And it, it goes back to like for Chelsea, it seems to be anything that Chelsea do, it's a yellow card or it's a re- serious talking to. Their defender wiped Armando Breuer and the t- linesman went, he just got a shake from the, uh, he got a shake of the finger from the referee there. And I was like, should get a fucking yellow card. Shouldn't get a shake of the finger. What the fuck does that mean? Don't do that anymore. Why didn't our player get a don't do that anymore? In all in, like, in all fairness, in all fairness, just, obviously just the, the 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 referees the referees haven't just haven't nah, had just a me. great start to anything. And I mean, you know, obviously Lee, you, uh, you probably heard on the on the last pod we discussed the whole Luis Diaz situation and the apology and the PGMOL. Actually, Rick, before before we move on to, to Lee, because I, I need to ask him that question because he's a Liverpool fan and we haven't had one of those on the pod. So, Rick, and do you want to add anything to the? you want to add anything to the to the Chelsea? You know, to the Chelsea performance or anything like I said that you took away from it? No, nothing, nothing else to add. Like I said, that's that's it. We're trusting each other, we're playing for each other, and we seem to be getting the ball in the box more often and creating more. I hope Armando Breuer starts the next game as well against Arsenal. I know he'll probably go with Jackson, but I'm hoping Breuer starts. And I'll be honest with you, like I wouldn't give Sterling a run out because we've seen what he can what he can do against the big team, which is nothing. He'll just get scared. I know he got involved all four goals, My but let's be just let's... getting goals and, and assists and, and being nah, involved. But still, he's still again, he does that. He did still. that against Luton. No, I think we went and played Nottingham Forest. He did nothing. Played against Villa. He did nothing. And all he ever seems to want to do is touch the ball and then kick it back towards the midfielder where it came from. And although he can isolate himself in a one to one position on one on one attacking scenarios, and he never goes at the play. And you're like, come on, mate! Like you are that guy. Like you've got Premier League experience do is something this season so far pardon is he your top scorer this season so far he is and the goals he scored was probably yesterday and Luton like come on like this, this I love speaks the way for Lee asked that question 
I love the way yeah, we ask that Exactly, question. but that's meaning nothing to me. Like, if you're watching Chelsea week in, week out, you want more from your team. It's like me saying to you, is your McAllister your best defensive midfielder this season so far? And you would say he is, oh. but that's not his position or that's not what I want from him. Same as asking you, Larry, you'd be like, oh, isn't Havertz your best penalty taker? And you're like, yeah, but how often do we get penalties, for example? You know, like, I hear what you're saying, but you oh, want yeah. more I, from I would ne- Sorry, I would never agree to that. It's clearly Saka or <laughs> exactly but for argument's sake what I'm saying to you is like we watch our teams we know what we're missing and what we're missing is Sterling being able to attack defenders because he's quick he's agile he's creative he just lacks, seems to lack the confidence and be like do you know what I'm not doing that and as frustrating as for Sterling not attacking defenders that's how frustrating it becomes for Mudrick than trying sometimes of just attacking defenders all the time there's no mix into their game yeah. it just seems to be one way and that's it very one dimensional there's no compromises but yeah it. other than that nothing else to take really I hope this is Sterling going actually do you know what I can run at defenders I can do this I am Raheem Sterling I am an English international I am a Premier League winner I am this I am this and just kind of like what's that called that self-loving where he looks himself in the mirror and goes vanity vanity yeah, and all I keep getting is um, What's that thing of Ross where Mel Gib- our friends where Mel Gibson goes, you are the man. <laughs> oh, what, no, what, Bruce, uh, Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis, sorry. Yeah, Bruce yeah, yeah. Willis, yeah, yeah. Mel I'm just a love machine. <laughs> hey, man. Well, oh, just, yeah, love machine. Just say, I'm just a dribbling machine. And I mean, to be fair, to you've actually you've actually come up with a good campaign for for Sterling there. I am, I am, I am. So that's pretty that's pretty good that you know you should message him or if you listen to like Raheem, if you listen to this podcast, right, you can you take, are like, you <laughs> are and I am. <laughs> and yes, by the way, can it. I just say it? We're sitting we're sitting first twice. Sorry, what? Did you yeah, say you Chelsea had... first? What are you saying? What are you talking twice. About? We're first twice, one and one. Oh. Well, I mean, sorry. What's your what's your leak? Let me just have a look. Let me just clarify something in my brain here, because you, you need clarity. Let me just let me just. Do we need clarity here? Is that what you say? Because let me just clarify it for you, right? You're actually sat eleven, top so, of the bottom half, top oh, of the bottom half. We oh, are coming oh. on. Yeah, one yeah, on one. Maybe, yeah, one and one. Uh, no, that's it. But yeah, moving on. I've got nothing else to add on Chelsea. Let's yes. obviously so, stick in London. No, no, yes. yeah, before, before we do that, I do oh, you want to your question about, on, the, uh, about the PGMO. Because like, I, I know, Lee, I know we obviously have discussions on the group and we've got another friend of ours, obviously a crazy Liverpool fan as well. So now that we've got you on the pod, like, what did you what did you think of that? I mean, what, what's for, for you? Obviously, I know what you thought, but what what is the best solution that could have come out of that that probably would have been fair? There isn't one, really. The... Them coming out and apologising, they were always going to do that. It was clear watching the game live that he, he was on side and that they didn't show the lines and that they knew, you knew straight away that they'd, they'd made a mistake. But the whole, obviously Klopp said about the game being replayed, he, he didn't go and say, I want this game replayed. He was saying that would have been the fair way to do it. Yeah. So yeah. now everybody's jumping on that bandwagon of, Right, let's replay this game, let's replay that game. But the difference in all these other games that have had mistakes, you don't have the proof that the referee or the VAR knew there and then why the game was playing that they had made a mistake within three seconds of the restart. I think, so, uh, I think I was going to say, Lee, I mean, I don't know if you actually heard the recording that they released, the official recording that the ref was having with the uh, with the assistant ref. And again, it was it was just tough listening, to be fair with you, because it was just a case of like, uh, no, it's offside. Go look at that again. Go look at that again. And then seconds later, the guy's like, oh, no, game's playing. And then he's like, well, no, it's that was that wasn't offside. That was the clear goal. Yeah. And then he goes, oh, no, the game's already restarted. And I'll so put a clip. I'll put a clip on it on the on the podcast for people who haven't heard it. But that's that's pro, like you know that's the gist of it. And I just don't think that's acceptable. I, I don't think that's acceptable at all. So what they said is the rec- their thought in the in the VAR room or wherever they are that the goal had been given. So they checked it, seen he was onside, and said correct decision. Um, Play yeah, on, yeah. Check, check complete. So they did, and then as soon as the Tottenham centre half took the free kick. Literally, the ball had barely even left his foot. And the fella, the, what do they call him, the replay assistant, is it? Yeah, yeah. He, he clicked on straight away. They're taking a free kick here, not a kick off. So yeah. the ball got played out, I think got played to the full back, knocked down the line, got headed back, went out for a throw. And that's when they're saying, the game's restarted, I can't do now. Can't do now. Yeah. The ball is out of play. So you could have done something. Nothing significant has happened. 
No, not at all. Yeah, no. All. And again, like I said to you, Rick, you know, he's got the whistle. That's why the ref has got the whistle, so he can control the game and not just be like, oh, well, they kicked it now. I can't really do anything about it. Just not at this at the level that we're talking about. It's not even something that we should be discussing. But yet here we are. I don't understand yes, how they got the wrong decision to say like, oh, goal disallowed instead of goal scored. Like I just don't. Yeah. I understand they're trying to blame lack of communication, but what must you say for you to misunderstand what I've just said? What what must have uh, like I as the main referee, the official on the pitch, must have said to you two who are in the Stockley Park in the VAR, VAR room? What must I have said for you to be like? Oh, did he say goal uh, allowed? Like, what did I say? Like, oh, offside goal. You just saw. Like, what, do you see what I mean? Like, what must I have said for you to misunderstand what I was trying to say? Like, if there's you know, surely there's got to, unless they've got to come together and just get a script together, like keep words down to a minimum. You know, offside, check, check goal offside, offside or onside. You know what I mean? Like, but I think yeah. the way moving forward, like I touched on the previous part as well, is previous episode. Sorry, was to have the full audio being played to the stadium like they do in rugby you can hear the referee the main referee then is in control I've seen in rugby times even now the rugby world cup's going on what's the other day I was like is that a try can we turn it around can you give me a different angle can we focus zoom in on the knee is that touching is that do you see what I mean there's like clear precise the whole stadium can hear I as the manager of this team or the opposition's team then I can kind of question that with a fourth official and be like hold on a minute he's on side we're checking whether the goal is disallowed not whether the goal is given, like what's going on, and it's shambolic. But obviously, I'm glad it happened to your team and not my team. Well, so you say that, but sit, sit and watch the screen, watch the game, and they are scored, and then the camera goes to the line, Lino that's got its flag in the air. So yeah. how could they possibly think the goal had been given? Yeah, that's that's a, that yeah, fair point. So they obviously the the on field guys that have gone with the fact that it's offside, and then that's why he let the free kick happen, even though someone else sh- that they should have waited for someone else to actually finish the check and done it properly. But again, it, it should, whichever way you look at it, it's just not good enough. And again, apology is not good enough. And in terms, of, obviously, Klopp, I know that he was he was uh, sort of half joking about the game being replayed because that definitely wouldn't have been fair to Tottenham as much as I, I don't really care no, it's not fair to anyone, fair. No. but I think if you're going to come out and apologise and you want to change something I just honestly add that goal back it's 2-2 two, two. that's a fair that's that's the fairest thing that they could have done do you know what I mean without, without it, but the problem with that being it will set a precedent for other matches yeah, but, exactly. will, but even though it'll set a precedent will the other refs you know they'll be more careful next time because they don't want to be embarrassed like uh, like that what was his name uh Robert England or something? What was the something record? England, yeah. Whatever. England. Yeah. Dan England. England. Dan England. Darren England. That's, that's it, yeah. It, yeah. So, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's if you're going to come out and apologise, okay, you've done it wrong. Nice one. Thanks for that. Give me the goal back. 2-2. Two, two, end of story. There's no, there's, you know what I mean? It's a mistake. Sorry, Tottenham. That's, that's what happened. You've gained an advantage now because of our mistakes. So we're just going to have to give that goal back to them. There you go. Or, you know, it, I, I know it sounds easier in theory than practice, but you know, something has to be done where something has to be like a precedent has to be set on how you handle I, these situations. I, yeah, I think I think I hear what you're saying, but I, I don't think that would work neither. Like given the goal back, because then Tottenham would come out and make a counter argument. We would have still gone and scored because we were up with ten men or like had an extra man and so on and so forth. The way that they've done it is yeah, very sorry, political because so the Rick, best scenario we, is we apologise, we're going to learn, we're going to review, and it should, and we're going to make sure it doesn't happen again. But it's like Pochettino said when they interview him because all the managers I think got asked their opinion on VAR. Pochettino said I trust the car, it's the driver that I have a problem with and it's the same thing here, VAR is there, you trust the VAR to do the right thing, like Gary uh, Gary Neville said it before, if you're offside by an inch or millimetre, you, you are by the letter of the law, you are offside but it's then again it still has human error there although they're trying to minimise it to human error if we're drawing lines, this is why I said use a Champions League model that they use, a 3D digitised one there is no error with computers. There is, okay, unless there was a dodgy programming, but so far I've never seen an error in the Champions League with the offside rule. I've never yeah. seen a goal being disallowed like that and I've never seen a goal being given when a player was offside if he has scored an offside goal. And if that is, if we're at the elite level, which we are, and we're saying the Premier League is the best in the world, then we need to have the best system in the world. And it should, drawing lines should not even come into it because there don't seem to be cameras directly at the angle to see exactly where the player is. It seems to be from a like, if they ha- if it's happening at 12 o'clock for argument's sake, the camera angle seems to be coming from three or two o'clock, you know what I mean? Rather than directly north facing from exactly where it's happened. And that's, I think that needs to change. I think we need to go to that sort of digitized where we can see the yeah. last defender, heel, boot, stud, whatever it is, is used as part of the playing more of a sense of that way isn't it but I think sorry Rick just real, last thing I'll say on this by the way because obviously I know we discussed it but um, 
you saying oh Tottenham will come out and be like oh we could have scored again I'm not working off theory here because t- Liverpool actually got that goal which was wrongly disallowed you know what I mean so it again that's not theory that's like if Tottenham go oh well we could have scored more well I don't know that but these guys actually scored this goal and we chalked it off do you know what I mean so that's why I say that could have been the fairest thing like unfortunately because right now Tottenham they on that win they won because of the ref because of the mistake that VAR made that's the only reason they won. They were not going to win that game. That was at best a draw for for Tottenham. But the fact that that happened, you know, the heads dropped and everything around it. So I, that's why I say it's probably the fairest thing. Obviously, I'd rather it not happen and they just, you know, do their job properly, what they're asked to do. Yeah, 70k, course, 200k, yeah. Your do yeah. your job properly. Well, that's so. 100k a year base and then plus three, four yeah. grand every ma- every weekend. Yeah, so. yeah we, we look at the we game very well paid. <laughs> but yeah. yeah um, um, should we no, move on then? Should we move on to you, to you guys? Let's do it. Let's see you talking today. So obviously, I, I saw that lineup and I thought, what the actual fuck is going on here? For both teams, by the way. So if I just quickly go on this and then I'll get your opinions on it. I personally thought when I saw City lineup, I thought Guardiola got it wrong again. Because he tried to nullify your midfield rather than play his game. And yeah. a part of me is glad that he failed but I'm just not happy he failed against Arsenal, if that makes sense. Yeah, obviously <laughs> you won't be. Yeah, of course you won't be. That's standard. You know but, I mean? uh, because he's an overthinker. Like, I don't understand why Rico Lewis or Nico Lewis, whatever his Rico name Lewis, is, yeah. Rico Lewis, yeah. left back, playing in midfield. Like, what's he doing? The 100 million geezer, role, 100 yeah, million geezer who, caught, who came from RB Leipzig, he's playing left back. Like, why is he not centre-back? He's expected to run up and down the pitch. He's not playing a Doku who he brought in who's an attacking-minded midfielder. He's not playing a Jack Grealish. He's not playing Alvarez in the right position. Alvarez was more or less on the right. And I think Mika Richards touched on, Richard touch on it as well after a little bit. He said, why isn't Alvarez in the middle of the park in that 10 where he gets the little pockets and feed off with Haaland and so on? Everything about this game for City was just shocking and to be fair you guys weren't much better neither it was just very much cancelling each other get to the final shite play some decent passes beat a press Arsenal fans obviously cheering every pass and so on which is great because you're the home team and then get to the final third absolutely nothing until Havertz came on and oh Martinelli Martinelli Martinelli, came on Martinelli was the change Martinelli was definitely yeah Martinelli was the change but even with Martinelli you weren't doing anything up top Havertz came on and he could hold the ball up. Enketia lost every time he came into Enketia, it was bounced off like it was Lukaku. I thought, like, because this guy's not got a first touch here or what? But Enketia, yeah, what did Enketia. you think then? from the start to the from start to finish? Talk us through Larry's thought process of this team and joy and well, misery at some point as well of the red card. But we'll get into that. To be fair, the the, the lineup wasn't any like there wasn't much different than what what we talked about on the on the last episode and obviously I wanted to see I said to him, Ramsdale would obviously would probably be all right in this match but he can't remove Raya and then insert Ramsdale in an important match like this after what is the three matches that Ramsdale hasn't started so match fitness I think they made the right the right choice by by picking Raya throughout the game I don't know if you if you watched the whole thing Raya I'm not going to lie to you right Shaky. My heart was I was about to throw up my heart because I don't know what he was what he was doing on some occasions. Like the amount of time that he held that ball was was just unbelievably not satisfying. <laughs> it was just on edge, everything about it. But uh a couple of bad passes, a couple of mistakes. There could have it could have been such a different match. It really could have from the from the right off from the beginning. But uh, and Ake almost proved that, you know, he got in there, he almost scored, which Luckily for us, he didn't. But uh, but yeah, in terms of the the lineup, not not really surprised at that. Jesus on the right, like I said, and Ketia uh, centre, and then Trossard on the left, just because I don't think he wanted to start Martinelli and uh, you know potentially injure him again for, right from the beginning. But you know, I think the the some problems that we had was uh, missing Saka. You know, he he provides width, he opens up the pitch for us, and. With him there, we've got that option, you know, just a little bit of an extra one-two one, on the side. Him and Odegaard, they've got a nice understanding. Ben White down there as well. But uh, so Jesus was a bit narrow for me. Like, he, well, he didn't open the field up that much. He was a bit narrow. And uh, there was instances where Odegaard was looking for that runner, like a sacker, but there was no one there. So it was a bit... It was a bit edgy as a match, um, and definitely, definitely, I was nervous watching that. And obviously, I, I, I don't know, I don't know if you actually caught the match. I mean, what, what did you think? I know you don't care for any of the teams. I know that. Yeah, <laughs> I watched the game. Yeah, um, I thought it was poor, poor quality. To be fair, yeah. 
I know you see it a lot when uh, when games are hyped up like that, and then it doesn't really live up to it. But yeah, it just I'm not sure. The I think both midfields were were terrible. Yeah. Um, Arsenal's defence was absolutely brilliant. And uh, Haaland, Dawson Haaland, hardly took the ball. Um, yeah. Going forward, I, thought, I think Arsenal looked looked pretty good, but obviously with your injuries, you've got Jesus playing out wide, playing out of position. He's obviously going to be more effective in in the middle, through the middle. But I thought he'd done all right. To be fair, I thought I thought he was one of your one of your better players. Yeah, he got stuck in, didn't he? Quite a lot, especially against yeah, the defender. I um, no, I, I thought Bodegar was awful. I'll be honest with you. Like, but then again, like you said, I didn't think of that. Maybe he was looking for the sackers and stuff. Not awful, but didn't, it wasn't to his best of what we used no, to see no. with Odegaard with those cut through passes. But uh, yeah, no, I agree. I agree with Lee's uh, observation there as well. I was literally going to say the same as well. Just defensively, awful midfield. Defensively, uh, again, I couldn't. I couldn't ask for any more. Even at the end, when Haaland sort of went down Gabriel's side, that's where. He, Usually mistakes happen, you know, you'll panic right at the end or you'll get too too cocky, overconfident, and you'll be like, oh, I can get this ball, and then you'll overreach and then you'll get a penalty or concede a penalty. So I'm glad that even though when Haaland moved over after Doku came on, he moved over a bit more to the right towards Gabriel's side because he was getting no joy. Saliba was giving him absolutely nothing. Not, he had him in his pocket, he had him in his top pocket, top shirt right there. He didn't do anything. And that's, that's, what, that's what Saliba does to Haaland and he has done every time they played against each other. And I think that's more of a thing though as well not taking away from Saliba if you look at the way Haaland City play with Haaland is when the def- midfield is running at the defenders and that's when the defender then has to come out to cro- close down a De Bruyne a Gundogan last year and so on and then that created the space for Haaland in the box to move because when he has to do it himself with like smart movement his, his movement is great don't get me wrong he was top scorer in the league last year but it's to kind of that outside of the box movement sometimes he lacks and sometimes he just stays next to the defender thinking, oh, I'll, I'll be all right here. But yeah, they didn't play for Haaland's strength. Yeah. yeah, but there was nothing. No, because the not. defender didn't commit anywhere else other than staying on Haaland. And he's got passed between Saliba and Gabriel. So defensively, Arsenal were pretty, very, very good. And obviously it showed clean sheet against City. But yeah, I think for me personally, it was just City getting it all wrong. Guardiola getting it wrong again. Overthinking. It's, Overthinking. Overthinking. I don't know why he put five midfielders. Five midfielders. I've never seen City with five midfielders and Haaland up on his own. Like, what was he doing? Trying to shut down Arsenal. And I'm always happy when a manager does that. Rather than play their game, tries it. Okay, tactically do what you want to do slowly, but start your game. What's your plan on this game? Your plan should not be to kind of hinder my plan. Your plan should be to overcome my plan and make small tactical changes. Okay, Jorginho is bossing it. Let's add another midfielder. Or Odegaard's doing this. Let's do this. John Stone on the bench. Why isn't he starting? Okay, come back from injury. injury, Well, then do what they did with Trent. Start him and then take him off halfway through or 80th minute. I'll put him on earlier. if if Or play Nico Lewis as a CDM. Don't play Nico Lewis as more or less like a CAM or a CM moving forward. I saw Nico Lewis in the final third more often than than I've ever seen him there. He's a a defensive-minded player. Play He's him like Kinchenko, isn't he? That's yeah. why they're trying to utilize him and then put but three. But not in the that back high up, though. He came yeah. so high up at the top. Play him as a CDM, or just do what Herrera did to Hazard when Mourinho was at United. You stay on Odegaard. Wherever he goes, you go. If he goes to the toilet, you follow him to the toilet. I don't think I don't think Rico Lewis would have been able to handle Odegaard. I'll be honest with you. <coughs> but, what is like to be there? Because you're right. Because Odegaard got the ball. There was one thing I was talking because I watched the game with a friend of mine, and he said, "I love that when players get the ball and then turn and look at the defense because yeah. half of the time they've got their back to goal and they pass it and then turn around trying to get the ball and half turn." Odegaard got it first touch. He jumped over a ball and then he was just looking at the city goals. I was just saying, so, I love that jump that he does where he sort of yeah turned, yeah yeah he just the open touch and turn at the same time and Options. jump all combined. Yeah, absolutely, man. No, he's a quality footballer, but today, yeah, they, he, he looked very average. They kept him quiet. They kept him quiet. Yeah, yeah they, they kept him quiet. They overloaded the midfield. You know, Odegaard, again, when doesn't have that sack of support, and then therefore Ben White doesn't go up there to support as well as much. Um, it becomes a little bit more like, you know, oh, it's Odegaard not really playing well, rather than, you know, oh, he doesn't have the support and cast around him for him to play well and, you know, spray them balls. But, uh, but yeah, look, in terms of performance, like you said, halfway through that, like you know, before the last sort of twenty minutes or something, I was yawning. I was actually yawning watching this match. That's how that's how like bored I was. I was becoming bored and scared at the same time. I don't know if that's a feeling you've ever had. Bored and scared. I don't know. Like watching a shit horror movie. But uh, so last twenty minutes we were good. 
for me, uh, obviously, uh, the, the main talking point really was the red card or lack of red card in this case. Boys, Lee, I'm going to start it off with you. Go on, Lee, start with you, Paul. Tell me, tell me your honest thoughts. Don't be influenced by Ricky, all right? He's a Chelsea fan. I've just got to remind you, all right? Zero influence Reds influence going to stick together. Red's going to stick together. Just oh, it's take. the Reds. <laughs> <laughs> red buddies, red buddies, stick together. Yeah, yeah, I, do. I think it was a red card. When I first seen it, I thought it was yellow, but then when I seen the replay, <clears throat> it it was nasty. It was a nasty one. Andy came through the back of him. To be fair, so, like from the from the side to the short, back. sweet to the point. It we just asked for a five hundred word it, essay. My man just be, went straight on for the A star. It was succinct. It was succinct and to the point, and there's no need to go about it any further because it was a definite red card. And I know Mika Richards came out on the on the halftime on the halftime. Uh, what is it? Uh, what a, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. A review? Halftime, review. halftime show. What halftime analysis. That's the one. Analysis. That's what I was looking for. Halftime show. My guys watching NFL. <laughs> NFL out here, but that's actually on tonight. So. But uh, no, I, he came out and he said, he, he was like, ah, you know, I watch it slow motion. It makes it look so much worse. I know it makes it look worse because like in real time, yeah, even I, if you I, shoot freeze someone, frame, it's always worse. Even if you shoot someone in all. real time, it's not going to look that bad. It's like, oh, that, what happened there? But then you slow it down. Like, damn, that guy got shot. Like comparison from... <laughs> I'm just saying, like, COVID no, no, he he saying, it. It nearly he broke went the guy's it. ankle. It, it nearly broke the guy's ankle. Come on, man. It, it, that was a red card if I've ever seen one. If that wasn't a red card, what happened to the second yellow? Why was there no second yellow? See, I, obviously the first one, I'm, I'm I'm not doing a Wenger or a Fergie here. I have to see it again. But I'm genuine. And I saw the challenge and I only called you on freeze frame. And that's when I was like, is that how it happened? Am I on mute? Is that why you're shaking your finger? Oh, no, I'm not on mute. I thought you were shaking your finger. I'm shaking my head because like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, <laughs> I thought you're doing it because I'm on mute. I'm like, wait, I'm on mute. Now, uh, for me, honestly, joking aside, all jokes aside, the second one I saw better, the one on Declan Rice, and I was like, this doesn't... If it was without a yellow card, it merits a yellow card. And before you kind of jumped out, jump on me here, be like, well, yellow card is a yellow card. If two equals red, then he should get off. But then he would have ruined the game if he'd come off for that reason, right? Because what I saw there was him, he put his foot there in that position to block it. Declan Rice kicked the ball and then kind of hit his studs. You don't put yourself in that position, but it's not a yellow card and the referee waved it off straight away. The first one, on the freeze frame, if you freeze frame it, it looks a lot worse. Jones's yellow card looked a lot, uh, red card looked a lot worse against Spurs because of the freeze frame. He went over the ball, he hit me right on my shin, so on and so on. But in the reality, it wasn't that bad. He got the ball there, he went over. I get it, I get it. But it's I'm saying Jones got well. Jones got that red card. Kovacic should have been ruled by the, the same. This is the red card as well. From what you guys are saying, then yeah, like obviously if it's going to be one rule for one, it needs to be one rule for all. Not. Same again. This is what I was the problem with weak referees and inconsistencies. Uh, but yeah, for me, I, honestly, I can't give you a full opinion. But from what I saw, and freeze frame, it looks a lot worse. It's, it's a yellow card, maybe is the best decision. Probably like an amber, orange, that kind of. Bit, but it wasn't a direct red for me. You're you, so right, a second you're yellow then. Lee. So a second yellow then. <laughs> <laughs> no, Lee. Lee. All right. Okay. He said I mean, something. What, you, what, was what was he saying? Because he said something in the smoke. Lee, what do you think? What do you think? Was that a second yellow or not? Like, oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Nah, I, not even close. You, you, it, you mind are tripping. You, man, you Reds are tripping. Your look, mind it is. Doesn't, it doesn't. It your doesn't mind matter, is. Right. It doesn't matter because you know. Yeah, obviously you're always going to disagree. You're always going to want Arsenal to lose. That's no, no, it's not that. I just think you guys obviously have got a got a rivalry, There's, both teams now, because you're both quite good. And obviously, you're no way City, but that wasn't like if you fair. No you way fair. Kovacic should have finished that match being subbed off. There's absolutely no way. He should have come mind. off at half time. I can't believe Guardiola risked it. Forget that. He should have been. He should have been off from that red card or the second yellow at least. I'm saying there's no way he should have finished that match the way he did. He should have been sent off. Right, let me see it. Let me see. Let I me think, see if I can get this up again. You can watch the free frame. You can watch the the quick time it doesn't matter it, it's always going to show you the same thing the guy nearly went through his ankle that's what happened it was studs up out there that's what happened look at his ankle twist man um but boss was ricky's second yellow was because it was literally what was it two minutes yeah, no, yeah wait, no, within five, seconds yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah but if anything i think if you're going to go flying into a tackle like that after you've already had a, a yellow card which you will very lucky to only have a yellow for yeah, if you're going to go I flying to a tackle straight away, then you deserve to be off. Martinelli got what was it against Crystal Palace, wasn't it? Like or against Wolves, I think it was that he got the first yellow yeah, yeah. And, throw yeah. it, and then he got a second yellow immediately afterwards. And I, I, do you know what? I even think it was Michael Oliver who gave him that yellow. But if you're going to get two yellows for that, and you're not going to get two yellows for for a rash and reckless challenge, it 
I, I don't know. Might as well just scrap the whole carding system as far as I'm concerned. Okay, that is dirty. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's a dirty tackle. That's a dirty tackle. Like, that's a red card all over the place. There's not even... That is card, fucking think. dirty. That is nasty. Exactly. So, possible red card. See his foul play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it now. No, that is dirty, that. That's, that's, no, that's, I, can't, that's, I can't be a hypocrite. That that that's that's proper dirty. It's like especially like Lee said as well. Come from behind, straight on the ankle. I think no, that, um, that's that's danger in the play. That I understand he slid for five yards or fifty yards, whatever you want to say, with the studs showing, and he didn't jump into the challenge. But you can't do that. No. You can't. That's, that's that, not acceptable. That's a, dirty, that's no, no, that's a red that. card. Like he shouldn't have finished. He, yeah, I'm with you on that one. The Declan Rice one, it wasn't a second yellow, but the first one should have been a, a straight red, red, a very hemoglobin red. But, <laughs> <laughs> like the other that I've got in the back there, you know what I mean? Um, but I think even for the, the, the thing is with the Declan Rice one, he, because the, the, he did almost the same tackle on Rice as he did on Odegaard. That's that's another reason you should yellow him because, like, mate, did you not learn from the first one? You literally took the guy's ankles off and you went and tried to do it again. Now that's a second yellow. That is a second caution, unfortunately. But anyway, look, whatever we won, it was one nil. Martinelli made the difference. Um, I can't say good, great performance. It just wasn't. It was a good performance defensively and in that sort of uh, in that rice role. You know, they kept him and Jorginho really kept that midfield going, which I was very happy to see. But all in all, just ecstatic the fact that we beat beat City in what in the last once in the last 12 matches that we faced them in the Premier League so I'm happy with that I think 2015 was the last one that um, you're definitely on mute now though uh <laughs> There we go. There I we clicked go. on the Skype uh, app icon rather than clicking on the mic. Lee's watching this live, by the way. Like you know, we he's this is, live. This is how we do it, Lee. This, this is, is how we do it, Paul. This, this is, is this is how happened. we do it. <laughs> and obviously, going off the joy on your face, we might have to make these into videos and send them out. I think we do. For I think all we do. to enjoy. But we need uh, to have more no, guests. what was I going to say? Was for me? Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Now you, you've clogged clogged my mind. Uh, oh, what Hit me we with it. I mean, with oh, it, Rick, what were you saying? I was talking about Martinelli and the performance just not being an excellent, like a great performance, but defensively in midfield, we... I no, Martinelli it, yeah. came on. I don't know if you saw Martinelli, but he was the only player chasing back. I don't know yeah. if you saw that, yeah. but he was yeah, yeah, yeah. full pace chasing back. Okay, he had more energy and so on and so forth, but he's got that in his game. He plays for that. I wanted to touch on the thing of the cover two yellow cards, same as Martinelli's. The second one on uh, on Reese wasn't as malicious as Martinelli's when he pushed the player for the throw against Wolves. You know, when you made that comparison, and then after that, he just came and hauled at him from behind just to take him down. That was intent to stop the play f- from going on, so that's yeah. why he got the yellow card. This one, I think they let Kovar off simply because the intent was to try and get the ball rather than be, be malice uh, or hurt the player or any malicious behind it. There was nothing, it was just it was more of an intent to get the ball. But um, was I, was gonna gonna say, I was going to say something else, but honestly, it clogged my mind with unmuted me watching it live. I was talking about Jorginho as well. Like him and uh, in that midfield role, he really obviously managed to, to to keep everything together. I was a bit wow, nervous. He was what, shaking. What I'm really going to lie to you. Like every time a ball went next to him, I was hoping he loses it. Like I thought he does standard Holgi stuff. But he didn't, the biggest thing that scared me for you guys was your keeper, by yes. Ray. He was, I know you touched it earlier as well, but there was a couple of times when I think, what was it? Uh, Alvarez closed him down once or twice. One time he hit side net in the second side half. Net, Alvarez yeah. jumped in front of him. That was, was minutes, like, by the way. That I was, was watching it, like I said to you, with an Arsenal friend of mine, and he was like, who do you want to win? And he had his family there as well, and a little boy wearing the uh, Arsenal kit. His son is an Arsenal fan. He was like, his boy came up to me, and he was like, who do you want to win? And I was like, I want Arsenal to win. I was like, I can't break this kid's heart. I was like, I want oh, Arsenal to win. <laughs> nasty bastard. You lied to a kid, to his face. He doesn't know that. He, does, he don't know that. He's five. He won't even remember it. Did he even remember their fifth birthday? <laughs> no, I don't, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't have kids. So but no, like, joking no. aside, uh, it was like, I think we all agreed on it, weren't it? Like the game got hyped and uh, it, it just did. didn't live up to the hype. It, it worked out It worked out in, in, in our favour as an Arsenal fan, uh, in the Arsenal community, it worked out in our favour, really. It got that hyped up yeah, and, so and I think I stuck. <laughs> Well, I mean, you're not you're not an Arsenal fan. Lee's not an Arsenal fan, so I'm talking about my my community over there, somewhere <laughs> in the corner, like where you, where you can, over there, where you can't see it because over with, here you can see it, but over there, like, with over there. your ESR, it's over there. Um, but yeah, ESI, yeah. But look, look, I don't want to. I, I, I don't. I, I've got nothing else to add on on the Arsenal match. Again, just really happy that we got that result. It it, it had to happen somehow, and fair enough. It happened like this. I can't complain. It. We got the job done. We didn't. We didn't get any red cards. No players, you know, sort of got injured, and it was good. We did it without Saka as well, which 
there you go. It's something that I, I, I didn't think we could we could possibly do, but it's been done. So, Rick, do you have anything to add over the uh, over the weekend? Nothing to add on the weekend. Um, obviously, you know, just to recap, happy with my team winning. Uh, hoping the referee decisions do get better though, because again, watching that Kovacic one back is like, yeah, that should have been a red card. That yes. really should have been a red card. Definitely. Um, Lee, any any matches of the weekend for you? Anything? Any matches that stood out to you that you sort of uh, you're like, all right, do you know what? That turned out all right. That. Not really. I didn't see a massive amount of them yesterday. To be fair, um, obviously, I've seen all the seen all the score lines at the end of the day. Both of them were uh, we're beating United. Oh, yeah. Around. Mm. We've got to touch on that before we go, by the way. We have Why are you going to start that conversation? What is Onana doing? What is Onana doing? I, I don't know. I, don't, I, I think, honestly... I don't know what he's doing. Like, how shocker. has that ball got under his, under his hand? Yeah, shocker. As that. a Man United fan, I'm not... Long may continue, by the way. This goes yeah. without saying. But how? Like, let's be realistic. How is that... How have you let go of De Gea, who's a shot stopper, to bring on this guy, who Thanks apparently is good with his feet, and he makes mistakes with his feet, but he's not very good at shot stopping neither. So, like I know players are like oh the defence and they've got so many injuries listen the injuries don't help the goalkeeper from making mistakes like doesn't matter who's in front of him could have been Cannavaro could have been Maldini could have been whoever you, he'll still if he's got a mistake in him he'll have a mistake in him so but dear, dear listener uh, luckily for you we actually do have Eric Ten Hag in live from Manchester today, <laughs> so I think we should go directly to him and uh, Eric <laughs> team <laughs> What, what do you think? What are we thinking with the team, by the way? Like, what's, what, uh, what's with Onana? Is live, by the what is with Onana, by the way? Like, video, that was quality. Look yeah. at him as well. He actually looks like Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. Come on here and get an but grief. <laughs> no, that's, that's why you're here. This is why this was going to happen to all the guests. This is a warning to all the guests yeah. that this is what's going to happen. But obviously, I mean... United, as you know, we talk shit about them all the time and they deserve it really because they've just been probably one of the poorest performing teams in the top six or top ten, if you will. They've just been really, really poor. Um, but yeah, I think, I, I don't know where they're going to end up, to be honest with you. Um, the match at Brentford, they almost, almost stole that. And then McTominay comes on, which is like, what? When did McTominay turn into Zidane all of a sudden? So, you know. Uh, we do actually have Sudan in the studio as well. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Wash I'm your done. mouth out, sir. I'm done. But um, yeah, so I think I think with with Ten Hag, we we every every week every week it's the same thing with Ten Hag, and nothing has changed. Like absolutely nothing changes with that guy. He put McTominay on, but that that doesn't mean that your team performed well. Next week, you actually have to go out and perform well and not just rely on one player to come in and save the team, which he probably won't do again because he's going to start and he's going to be shit and they're going to take him off again. So, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just looking forward to the day and I cannot wait for the day for, for Ten Hag to be sacked because I just don't rate him as a manager. I don't rate him. I don't rate him I, at all. I, I really don't. He really, he's really loyal to the players that he's brought in. I don't yeah. know if you've noticed. Yeah. So, Martinez yeah. would play a majority of the games. Anthony would play a majority of the games. And you think to yourself, neither of these guys are offering... Okay, Martinez was probably better out of the de possible defenders he could yeah, have, like a Lindelof and so on and so on. Yeah, exactly. Lindelof, Maguire, etc. But Anthony, why is Anthony getting more game time? What is happening? But he's so loyal to those players because he got praised the way he handled Cristiano Ronaldo and so on. Everything Ronaldo said was the truth. Yeah, he was then. He didn't lie. And because of because of Ten Hag uh, pushing Ronaldo out, that's why the whole Saudi thing happened. Do you know what I mean? All the Saudi, yeah. everyone moving to Saudi Arabia. It's because of Ten Hag. So thank you, Eric. Once again... <laughs> For your help, yeah, Belend. No, well, Lee, I know um, they're your biggest rivals. Like, obviously, yes. historically, Liverpool and Manu, the huge rivalry between you two. But what are your thoughts on what's going on over there? Let us hear them. Uh, without uh, gloating, by the way. Without gloating. Yeah, without gloating. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, no, um, I don't know if they'll get rid of him. I think I think he'll be there all season, Ten Hag, just because of how much he was hyped up when they brought him in about being the next next big thing really um, the players I don't know the players don't really look like the you know like the olden day United where the, the fight for the badge and the, you don't really have, have that um, well they're all new aren't they really they're all new and yeah. young they all seem to be like because let's face it in the last 20 years United haven't been the powerhouse that we know them to be 
you know, obviously we're a little bit older than the average 20 year old without giving our age away. But if you look at us, you'll probably guess a lot. We're in the north of 30s. We're, we're ascending upwards. Yes. There's only one way, man, and it's going up every but, single uh, number. You're, like, for me, like I just don't feel like the guys who have turned up, the Anthony's and stuff, they're talking about Manchester United being a big club. And they are, marketing-wise, value, the biggest in the world or one of the biggest in the world. But still, it's just like these players don't seem to want to do anything. So what would you change then? If you are Eric, without taking the mick and taking the piss on anything, what would you change? Like, what would you, if you're a United fan, I know you probably say, I wouldn't change anything, long may it continue, but realistically what speaking, change? what would you change? you be a United fan. That's probably what you would change. <laughs> I think he was the best player last season, but I think Casemiro needs dropping. I just think, I think his legs are going... He was at fault for the goal yesterday. I know what the penalty he gave away midweek, that wasn't his fault. He had to no. do that. But all season he's been he's been terrible. He looks a liability in there for him. Yeah, yeah I, I, I agree. I think his his lack of discipline is really is really affecting Man United, to be fair, because they can't build a stable midfield without him or with him. Do you know what I mean? They just they can't without find the right balance. Yeah. But I think yeah. so, so I mean what what this sort of shows really is the fact that you know Man United ever since Fergie left it hasn't been a manager's fault because let's face it they had David Moyes in there David Moyes is not a bad manager at the beginning everyone was like David Moyes taking over Man United and all this but look at all the managers that have come and gone look at all the managers that have come and gone what have they really done with United they've they've, they've brought in players then the managers left then players are still there on long contracts so another manager has to be like, oh, well, I have to get rid of you. And they said, well, how can you get rid of... Do you know what I mean? So it's like a snowball effect that they've they've really created themselves. That there's, no other, there's no other way to describe what Man United have done. But it's like, you know, it, it's sort of, they went, we are the best. So it doesn't really matter. We'll bring in who we want. We're still going to succeed. But guess what? Nah, that's not how football works. So, and, and, and it's clearly shown that up until now, Man United have not been impressive. As, as a squad, as a club, they're just... There's so much shit going They're on there. failing to attract top quality players as well though aren't they like before you'd think you'd, Man United came in for you you'd be like yeah I'm going to United but now there seems to be options now the blue side of Manchester seems to attract better players okay financially and Guardiola and the football that they're offering in Champions League but Man United it just seemed to fail to attract players I think Mason Mount if Man United weren't coming in for him he would have nowhere else to go I know Liverpool came in but Liverpool didn't offer the wages that they did and the only way they seemed to kind of bring players in going back to what you just said was offer them a high salary to get them to come to United over a Liverpool or over a Arsenal or something else and then the manager gets sacked and then a Maguire sat on 220 grand a week and when West Ham come in for him yeah. they're like oh we'll give you 80 or 100 he's like no nah, it's okay I want to sit here and fight for my place we all know what it means you want to sit there and collect your salary because you're towards the latest stages of your career and I don't blame you, you can't blame, that. blame I the can't people blame that making the decision at the club you know like the director or whatever his name was Ed Woodward or whatever I, I think it was him who was a director it was him, wasn't it? Yeah, it was him. Yeah, yeah. But even when I we talked that. about VAR, we talked about Fergie. If VAR was available during the Fergie era, they would not be half as successful as they were because those challenges that Man United plays, yeah. the influence oh. they had, of those course. freeze frame of Roy Keane what? challenges would have been red carded every We're not going to go down the history of <laughs> why Man United no, would have failed. But we're just saying. But, uh, I'm just we, saying. You, you're right, though. You're right. I think uh, they got lucky in the end, and that's that's what it was. Same as, uh, same as, uh, well, I was going to say same as Tottenham, but. They just oh, Tottenham, them, Liverpool yeah. against Newcastle. No yeah. disrespect to our our guest, our esteemed <laughs> guest here, but uh, <laughs> nothing lucky about it. No, no, no. Um, but yeah, so look. In, in terms of the weekend, it, it was it was quite. It was for, for me as an Arsenal fan. Obviously, started off a bit bad because you know it looked like Liverpool were going to win. It, Man United actually won. Chelsea actually won. Um, Tottenham obviously ended up winning, which is like oh my god. And then the I can't believe they're game. top. I can't believe the top, but again, yeah, it's not. It's it's not because they are a good team. They faced a team like Arsenal, for example. It was a draw because they were not good, and the goals that they scored, we gifted them two goals. We gifted them because there there was no one defending, and Son, he's not going to miss those. He's he's lethal. So so I think I, I don't. Again, like I said at the beginning, short of me saying mark my words, I I really don't think Tottenham are going to do that well this season. Maybe a top so four. So, what do you finish. think then? What's uh, what are you predicting for Spurs for this season? Trophyless again, and then uh, top four or not top four? I could see them probably, you know, snatching an EFL Cup because you know why not? They're out of it. 
Unless they I win the FA Cup. Well, they ain't winning <laughs> shit then. That is, they ain't winning nothing then. You know, that's the only thing that we're going to win. Part of me was going to let you finish, but I thought I can't do that to my boy. I can't do that all to right, him. No, they got knocked right. down by uh, League Two or League I love that's why. That's why I don't care about them, so, apparently. So why are they finishing then? Trophy loss uh, again? Yeah, oh yeah, they're definitely going to go trophyless, and um, I'd say I'd say best that they can probably hope for is like a is like a fourth, maybe a fifth. I don't, I don't, I can't see them in the top four. I think they're going to, I think they're going to drop in quality. Yeah, fourth. Say fourth. Yeah, I reckon so. Yeah. So who's Rick. missing out of the so-called top seven? Who do you think is missing out? Obviously, Chelsea. Man United and Chelsea, but then who's Sorry, the I'd, other I'd, one I'd missing out? First, I'd put Chelsea first. Chelsea, Man United. Um, and then, I mean, it'd be easy just to name a top four. I think top four is probably no, going to be Arsenal, City, Liverpool, Tottenham, and then Chelsea. So when you say Arsenal, City, do you mean Arsenal all the way to like March and then finish second? April, actually. April. <laughs> oh, is it April this time? You're going to go as far yeah, as that's April? When I, that's, that's when our players get injured, so that's that's what happens. But I think, do you know what, Rick? We'll, we'll, we'll come back, we'll come back during... You want Lee, sorry? I think the top four at the end of the season will be the top four that we have now, but in reverse. Wow. All right. All right. Go on. Hit well, me, hit me, with, hit me with that. Hit, hit me with that list, Lee. Hit us with that Liverpool's list. Liverpool's fourth. So Liverpool first, City, right? Liverpool, City, Arsenal, Tottenham. <laughs> nice. Nice. I love what you I love that. I love that. I love you know, it. And it, Confidence this, is brilliant. This support for the team is infectious and it's contagious. And I genuinely think we will make top four. Wait, are you are you pretend to be a Liverpool fan right now? Or no, no, I'm telling you that the Chelsea Blue, the West London team, will make Champions League football this season. Wow. Mark my, what did you say about Spurs? Mark my words. Well, I said short of, short of me saying that, so I didn't actually yeah, say that. I've got a funny feeling there. Uh, with Basuma being injured, very quickly since we're on the top four, I've got a feeling Spurs might really struggle. Not injured, sorry, suspended. Uh, they're, they're not going to do very good on the next couple of games because he was really the main guy for them I felt personally as well that I know we guy had a chat earlier has played eight matches with... and he's got five yellow cards Rick like that guy is so that's not his a position. good player that's him trying to get like challenges and so on and sometimes it depends what he got the yellow card for rather than judging like there was times I was chatting with my friend today about uh, the game if your team is on the counter attack sorry if you're receiving a what is the even word I'm looking for the <laughs> opponent is on a counter attack you have to take him out in the mid centre of the park before you concede a goal you literally have to make it look like you're playing the ball but your main aim is to stop that guy from going on if you win the ball great if not take the player out take the yellow card and then you do that for your team and you have no, to but do that if you're doing that if you're doing that every other game and you're getting suspended I just don't think how that's but he got suspended for the good. dive that was his stupid thing was he got a second yellow at Luton for awful. trying to dive which was unnecessary but uh, it'll be interesting to see how he does how Spurs do next and if there's an injury to Son then what's going to happen who's scoring the goals for Spurs so I've got a feeling they will miss out I think they will have a season like kind of like quite high up and then they'll be quite Spursy come March April I especially with their squad depth they don't really have a huge squad and if they go far in FA Cup and then their FA Cup games and midweek games and so on and so forth and this is when I think I'm hoping and thinking obviously as a Chelsea fan slightly biased but our play is coming back. We hit a bit of momentum and I've got a feeling we will finish fourth. Probably just scraped by the skin of our teeth, but we'll hit fourth. Hey, look, I love, I love the... the both the, shake your the, head at it, lads. Watch I it love happen. It. I love it all. This um, is not pretending to love Kai Havertz and Mason Mount either, by the way. And then when they get scored, they're like, oof, we don't have to pretend anymore. <laughs> pretend? I don't pretend to like Kai Havertz. I don't, so... <laughs> Now, Kai Havertz got immortality at Chelsea when he won the Champions League. And yeah, that's true. since then, it's like Kai Havertz, Kai Havertz. But now that he's at you guys, yeah, he's doing really well. Long may it continue. No, yeah, it's all right. Um, right, look, uh, we're obviously, we're gonna, we've gone way over than what we usually do, but because we have a guest and uh, we will be We back had setting up issues. <laughs> and that as well, yeah. So we're actually a lot later than uh, than usual. But uh, we will be back during uh, during halfway through the season to uh, to obviously to chat about you know who's going to finish the season at, from that point onwards and uh, and we'll be back with some predictions as well for the uh, for the for the international break. We've got some matches on. We can come up on the on the next podcast, which will be yeah. Friday we can do tomorrow. one. We can do like uh, yeah. We'll shut that up together. Get together and do some international. I think we'll have to do a Wednesday evening because the prediction was the games is happening on Thursday for the qualifier. Thursday, no, there you go. We'll, so uh, we'll do it. We'll do it on uh, Wednesday evening. We'll record. You guys will have it by Thursday, so you can listen to it for all that good stuff. Driving to work, riding, whatever you. Whenever you listen to it, we appreciate the love. So yeah, but you should have it ready by Thursday morning. Brilliant, Rick. Do you want to? Okay, well before actually you do take us out, uh, Lee. Just want to say a massive thank you for being here. Mate. Uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed you, it. We will it. have you back. Uh, we will have you back midway through the season, and uh, hopefully you start tenth or something. 
whatever you know yeah whatever it is we love our guests by the way we love our guests <laughs> we do love our guests no no exactly that goes thank you for coming Lee we appreciate making the time thanks for joining us and uh, with that said thank you everyone for listening we appreciate your ear holes uh, we wish you all the best stay safe stay alert and we'll catch you on the next one Thank you.